Boys and girls, welcome again to 123 Read at Home. This is Miss Celia, and I'm so happy that you join me today for our story. Boys and girls, today we're going to hear a fairy tale called The Emperor's New Clothes. This story was first written down by a Danish man named Hans Christian Andersen. Other fairy tales he's written include The Princess and the Pea, you may know that story, The Ugly Duckling, The Nightingale, and this is the one I bet you'll know for sure, The Little Mermaid. As I mentioned, Hans Christian Andersen was Danish, and that means that he is from a country called Denmark. If you notice on the map, Denmark is located in a little circle, and it's in the continent of Europe. And you can see it located right in that area where the little circle is. And think about where Denmark is in relation to where you are in the United States. Just look over to the left on your map. If you need some help, ask mom or dad to help you with that. And if you can locate where Ohio is in the United States. So that will kind of show you, here we are in Ohio. Hans Christian Andersen was from the country of Denmark. Just like the last time we got together for our story, The Fisherman and His Wife, we're going to start out with a picture walk. And just a reminder, a picture walk through the story together is when we're going to look at the pictures from the story to become familiar with the story, to see the characters of the story, and to make some predictions about what we think might happen in the story. This is the beginning of the story, The Emperor's New Clothes. Can you tell in the picture which person looks like a king? Well, he is the emperor in this story. And who do you think the two visitors are with the emperor? Why do you think they're visiting the emperor? Any thoughts about that? Think about the title, The Emperor's New Clothes. But notice on the two visitors that their clothes are kind of tattered and worn. Also notice their facial expressions. These two men who are the visitors, unfortunately, are trying to trick the emperor. And these two men are called swindlers. The two men, the visitors, say they are weavers, people who make cloth. And as we see in this picture, the weavers are working on their weaving loom. But do you think, boys and girls, that there's something strange about this picture? Think about it for a moment. Do you see any cloth on their looms? No. Hmm. Well, notice the man in the doorway. This man is the prime minister. He is a wise person who gives the emperor advice. Boys and girls, can you notice in this picture who the emperor is? Can you identify it? How do you know that he is the emperor? What are some clues? Think about it for a moment. What is he wearing on his head? Who is around him? Yes, you notice that he is wearing a crown. And he is surrounded by soldiers and followed by the royal court. Good problem solving. What do you think is funny about this picture? Is there anything funny there to you? Well, now that we've taken our picture walk, I want to make sure that you get out your response card. That's the page in your assignment packet that has the number two, the letter A, and the number one in the upper left corner of your paper. If you need some help finding that, ask your parent to help you find that. And we'll wait till you get that in front of you. What you're going to do on your response card is you're going to describe what you see in the pictures. You'll want to write down the names of the characters that you see. Remember we saw the Emperor, we saw the Swindlers, and we saw the Prime Minister. 
So get those down on your response card because we are ready to talk about some new things. Now, before we start the story, we're going to talk about some new vocabulary words that we will learn within the story as we get started. And the first one of those words is the word emperor. We've heard that already. And the fairy tale that we're reading today has the title, The Emperor's New Clothes. And in that title is the word emperor. And I'd like you to help me by saying that word emperor with me three times. You ready? Let's start. One, emperor. Two, emperor. Three, emperor. Great job, boys and girls. That's a new word we have, emperor. An emperor is a king or someone who is the ruler of an empire or a very large area of land, usually many nations. Can you point out who the emperor is in our picture? And just like the emperor, an empress is a woman who is the ruler of an empire, an empress. All the people of the empire referred to the emperor as your majesty. And the emperor had his tailor make him the most beautiful clothes. What do you think of? Or what words come to mind when you hear the word emperor? Why don't you talk for a few moments with mom or dad as you think about the word emperor and what words come to mind when you hear emperor? The next new word we're going to talk about is the word swindlers. In today's fairy tale, two swindlers trick the people. Can you say the word swindlers with me three times? I know you can. You ready? One, swindlers. Two, swindlers. Three, swindlers. Swindlers are people who trick others, usually in order to get others money or things. Can you point out the two swindlers in the picture? Great job. Be careful not to get tricked by swindlers who try to sell you broken things. The swindlers told the emperor that they would make his clothes out of magic cloth. Tell mom or dad whether or not you would believe what swindlers say. Would you believe what swindlers say? Yes or no? Tell mom or dad. Our next new word is the word curious. Curious. In our story, you'll hear, after a few days, the emperor grew curious to see the cloth. And please say the word curious with me three times. You ready? One, curious. Two, curious. Three, curious. Great job. Curious means having a desire and wanting to learn more about something. And here are some examples of the word curious used in a sentence. Rohan was very curious about the bug on his front door. It had a purple body and bright orange legs. Here's another sentence. Carrie is curious about what will happen in the next chapter in the book she is reading. Boys and girls, have you ever been curious about something or seen an animal that was curious about something? Think about using the word curious. Try to use it when you describe it and tell about it. Think of a sentence that you could share with mom or dad that uses the word curious in it. And we have one more new word before we start our story. This new word is called inspect. Inspect. And as we read the story, you'll hear other noblemen came to inspect the cloth and all of them pretended to be able to see it. So can you say inspect with me three times? Ready? One, inspect. Two, inspect. Three, 
inspect. Excellent work, thank you. Boys and girls, when you inspect something, you look very carefully at it, usually to see whether what you are inspecting is of a good quality. For example, here's a few sentences that use the word inspect. The first one, Sam's father took their old car to the mechanic to inspect it and make sure it does not have any problems. And another sentence that uses the word inspect, at many popular places now, there are workers at the entrance to inspect people's bags for dangerous items. Take a moment and with mom or dad, can you think of two things that need to be inspected? Are there two things that need to be inspected that you think of that you could share with mom or dad? Take a moment and think about that. So we've been doing a lot of work. So give yourselves a big pat on the back and stretch those arms and wiggle the fingers, and wiggle your toes and wiggle your body because we're going to get started to find out what happens in our story for today. Can you remember again what the name was of our story? Yes, the Emperor's New Clothes. Great job listening and remembering. Thank you. Before we get started with our story, you probably will want to get out your Elements of Stories chart so that you can fill that out as you read. That assignment sheet has the number one, the letter A, and the number three in the top left corner. If you need some help finding that, please ask mom or dad to help you with that. Ready to start? Let's get started with our story, The Emperor's New Clothes. Many years ago, there was an emperor who loved fine or very nice and beautiful clothes. He did not care for or did not like hunting. He did not care for plays or opera or art. He was no lover of gourmet food or wine. His only ambition and goal was always to be well dressed. He had a different coat for every hour of the day. He loved to walk about and show off his fancy outfits. One day, two strangers arrived in town. Boys and girls, can you point out who those strangers are in the picture? Do you remember who they were? Right, they were swindlers. And remember, swindlers are people who trick others. They said they were master weavers from a faraway land. And weavers are people who make cloth. They told the emperor that they could weave the most beautiful cloth in the world. They said that not only was their cloth beautiful, but it was also magical. It was specially woven so that only the most intelligent and smart people could see it. Those who were ignorant and did not know much, could stare at the cloth all day and not see a thing. Astonishing, thought the emperor. I will have these men make a suit for me. When it's done, I will figure out who can see it. That way, I will be able to tell which men are intelligent and which are fools. The emperor gave the swindlers a purse filled with gold coins and told them to begin weaving that magic cloth right away. So those swindlers set up two weaving looms and pretended to be weaving their wonderful cloth. Boys and girls, let's stop for a minute. Let's take a look at that picture. What do you think is wrong with the picture? See anything wrong there? Take a moment and look carefully. Can you see? The cloth on the looms? Hmm. Well, I know you are very intelligent. So if that cloth was there, you would see it. But you know what? They had nothing on those looms, just like we've already noticed. After a few days, the emperor grew curious to see that cloth. The emperor was interested in the magical cloth that the weavers were making and he wanted to know more about it. At first, 
he thought he might check up on the weavers himself. But then he remembered what they had said. Only intelligent people could see that cloth. He was confident and sure that he was smart. There could be little doubt of that. But what if he was not? What if he could not see the cloth? Well, just to be on the safe side, he decided to send his prime minister to have a look at that cloth. And remember, boys and girls, the prime minister is a very important person to the emperor because the prime minister is someone who's supposed to be very wise and give the emperor advice about what to do. He is very intelligent, said the king. If he can't see the cloth, I dare say nobody can. The emperor called for the prime minister and sent him to check up on the weavers. The prime minister went to the room and peeked in and the two swindlers were working away at their looms. Prime Minister, one of the swindlers called out. You are welcome here. Come in, come in, come and see the cloth that we have produced. The man waved his hand at the empty loom and said, isn't it beautiful? Well, the Prime Minister squinted and rubbed his head. He did not see any cloth at all but he did not dare to admit it. That would mean he was a fool. So he pretended to see the cloth. Yes, said the prime minister. It is most beautiful indeed. I like it very much. Keep up the good work. Boys and girls, what do you think? Talk with your parent. Do you think the prime minister is telling the truth? Yes or no? And depending on what you think, why or why not? Well, the Prime Minister turned to leave, but the second swindler called out to him, Wait! Wait! Don't go! You must not leave without touching the cloth. I think you will be impressed with our weaving skills. We were just saying that it is the softest cloth that we have ever created. Well, the Prime Minister hesitated for a moment. Then he said, Of course! Of course! And he walked up to one of the looms. He reached out his hand and he rubbed his fingers together in the area where he thought the cloth must be. He could not feel anything. But he said, oh, It is very soft, indeed. Why, it's lighter than air. Boys and girls, talk with Mom or Dad about whether you think the Prime Minister is telling the truth. And why do you think he would describe the cloth as being lighter than air? Any ideas about that? Well, let's go on. Thank you, said the first swindler. We are pleased with what we have done, and we are making very good progress, too. The magical cloth is almost finished. But we need a little more money for thread and other materials. Of course, you, you understand. Oh, of course, of course, said the Prime Minister. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a bag of coins. Then he handed the coins to the swindlers. Well, boys and girls, would you have given the weavers more money? What do you think, yes or no? Well, the Prime Minister went back to the Emperor and told him that the cloth was quite lovely and as soft as could be. He said he was confident that the Emperor would like it. Well, that was what the Emperor had hoped to hear. The next day, he went to take a look at the cloth for himself. After all, if his Prime Minister had seen the cloth, surely he could see it too. But... When he stepped into the room where the two men had set up their looms, the emperor saw, right boys and girls, nothing on those looms. Oh my goodness, now the emperor is thinking to himself, this is terrible, he thought. I don't see anything at all. What can this mean? If the prime minister saw the cloth, it must be there. Then why can't I see it? Am I stupid? Am I unfit to be emperor? 
that would be the most dreadful thing that could happen to me. Well, now, boys and girls, before we go on, it's time for our mid-story check-in. We're going to stop and think about what's happened in the story so far and what might be happening as we move on. So my first question for you is, which characters have you met so far in this fairy tale? Share that with mom or dad. What do the swindlers say that they are making on their weaving looms? If you need some help answering the questions, you can always go back and take a look at the pictures again. They'll give you lots of great clues to help you with answering the questions. Next question is, who does the emperor send to check on his cloth? And what does the Prime Minister see? And what does the Prime Minister say that he sees? Next question. Can the Emperor see the cloth? How does that make him feel? think the Emperor will say about the cloth? Well, let's go on now and see what happens next in our story. Well, out loud, the Emperor said, remember, he was thinking to himself before. He wasn't saying it out loud. But out loud now, he said, it is magnificent, truly magnificent. Well, I have never seen cloth so lovely and girls. Talk to mom or dad now about why you think the emperor said the opposite of what he thinks. Why would he do that? Well then, shall we go ahead and make you a suit then, your majesty? <gasps> yes, yes, by all means, said the emperor. You can get my measurements from the royal tailor. And boys and girls, a tailor is someone who makes clothing. Well, those two swindlers sat up late into the night, pretending to work on the suit. They wove more invisible cloth that could not be seen. They cut the air with scissors and stitched the wind with threadless needles. Boys and girls, can you pretend like you're making an invisible suit? Cut that air. You've got your scissors, your make-believe scissors. Cut the air and then stitch the wind with those invisible threadless needles. Good job. Good job. You're making some wonderful invisible clothing yourself. Well, other noblemen now came to inspect and look carefully at the cloth. And all of them also pretended to be able to see it, for they did not wish to appear stupid. Soon the whole town was talking about that wonderful cloth and the emperor's new suit. At last, the day came when the emperor was to wear his new clothes in public. Hmm. Well, the two swindlers presented themselves in the emperor's dressing room at daybreak. Here is the jacket, said the first swindler, holding up an empty hanger. And here are the pants, said the other, holding one hand in the air. What do you think of them? Well, all of the emperor's men agreed that the new clothes were splendid. The emperor took off his clothes and the two swindlers pretended to help him put on the make-believe garments. Slip your right leg in here, your majesty. That's it. Now your left leg. Good. Now I must tell you, these pants are not like regular pants. The fabric is so light and so airy that it feels like you are wearing nothing at all. But that is the beauty of them. The men helped the emperor put on his invisible imaginary clothes. Then they led the emperor to his looking glass, his mirror. How handsome you look, your majesty 
said one of the swindlers. All of the courtiers nodded their heads in agreement. Boys and girls, how do you think the emperor looks? Why doesn't anyone tell the emperor the truth? Talk about that with mom or dad. Well, here's the day. The emperor marched out of the dressing room and made his way out of the palace, followed by many advisors and servants. He marched down the main street of town with soldiers and bodyguards surrounding him on all sides. The streets were lined with great crowds. Everyone had heard about the emperor's new clothes, made of magic fabric that only the wise could see. How lovely the emperor's new clothes are, one man said. And how well they fit him, added a woman. But none of them would admit that they could not see a thing. Well, the emperor was marching through the street, bursting with pride, showing off his brilliant new suit to everyone in the land. Much to his surprise, they all seemed to see what he could not. And so he was not going to be the one to tell them that he could not see his own clothes. My goodness. Just then, a little one, a little child, stepped out of the crowd, uh-oh, and cried out, hey, he hasn't got anything on. <gasps> a hush fell over the crowd. For a few seconds, nobody said anything. Then everyone began to whisper, the child is right. The emperor isn't wearing a thing. Then people began to giggle. <laughs> They cried out, he hasn't got anything on. At last, the emperor knew he had been tricked. He tried to march back to the palace as proudly as ever, but he was blushing and turned pink from head to toe, as everyone could plainly see. Boys and girls, people blush or turn pink or red when they are embarrassed. So how do you think that everyone could see that the emperor was blushing from head to toe? Any ideas there? I bet you know. Boys and girls, great job listening to our story today. So glad to have time with you. And I know you'll do a great job on all of your activity sheets that you'll be working on with mom or dad. So thank you, and I will talk with you again our next story, which we'll see in a few weeks. See you then. Keep reading.